Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, uh, The Outlier. Today, we are going to talk about SPSS and uh, the different uh, ideas uh, about SPSS. Uh, it's going to be a very short video of around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So please uh, bear with me. Insofar as uh, the agenda for today's presentation is uh, concerned, I'm going to talk about uh, five uh, important things. The first one being uh, the evolution of SPSS. SPSS, as you all know, is not a new software. Uh, it is uh, in the market for uh, quite some time, uh, easily 40, 50 years uh, now. So SPSS has uh, uh, undergone a sea change uh, ever since uh, it uh, has uh, it was launched uh, way back in 1968. We're going to talk about uh, some of these uh, features, additionalities, and variation of SPSS. The second thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, 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 an introduction to SPSS. Uh, when I say introduction, uh, I'm referring to uh, the full form of SPSS and uh, what SPSS can do, what are its strengths and such things. And thirdly, uh, we will be speaking about uh, the various terminologies of uh, SPSS. Now, if you look into uh, the official website of uh, SPSS, or if you talk to a salesman from SPSS, uh, they uh, usually use uh, their own vocabulary and it's very easy to get confused or intimidated with the, the terminologies that SPSS uh, salespeople use. So it's uh, always good to get ourselves uh, acquainted with some of the ideas here uh, so that we can better appreciate uh, uh, SPSS. Lastly, uh, we are also going to look at uh, the advantages and disadvantages uh, of uh, SPSS. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, quick and a very high level uh, perspective about uh, SPSS. Now, uh, let's look at uh, the history of SPSS. Uh, SPSS is uh, certainly not a new software. It has been in the market uh, for uh, 40 to 50 years easily. The very first version of SPSS that was launched uh, was launched uh, way back in 1968. I was not even born uh, in 1968. Uh, SPSS uh, uh, was uh, referred to as uh, the first version of SPSS called as SPSS 1.0, right? So this is the uh, very first version of SPSS. Now in India, uh, SPSS was introduced uh, in 1991. Uh, during 1991, uh, the fourth version of SPSS was introduced and uh, we used to uh, write little codes uh, to run uh, SPSS and SPSS uh, would run on an operating system, which is known as uh, uh, DOS uh, or uh, Disk Operating uh, System by uh, Microsoft. <clears throat> not many people uh, will be aware uh, or the present day generation might not be uh, familiar with uh, the DOS uh, uh, operating system. The DOS, uh, DOS is nothing but uh, the grandfather of uh, Windows, right? And to execute uh, some of these codes, uh, to execute SPSS, uh, 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 SPSS, you had to write uh, these little codes on uh, DOS uh, and then and, uh, you'd get uh, the output. Uh, now SPSS has a GUI, uh, it's a point and click, very, very user friendly. During those days, it was not. And uh, SPSS was uh, basically sold uh, in, uh, as uh, in terms of floppy disks. People, use, uh, people used to store SPSS and uh, uh, they would uh, sell it in floppy disks. So you'd have a huge stack of uh, uh, floppy disks. You did not have the concept of CDs or hard disks uh, during those days. So SPSS would come in uh, floppy disks and uh, you had to write these codes to execute SPSS queries. There was a fourth version of SPSS. And uh, by around 1998, uh, one of my for former, uh, uh, one of my bosses uh, by the name Sumit Bardhan, he set up a SPSS uh, franchise uh, along with a few business partners and uh, they acquired a tool which is uh, called as uh, Clementine, right? They acquired a product which is called as uh, Clementine. Uh, during the 98, 99, you had uh, three major uh, tools uh, in the market from a data mining standpoint. You had uh, Clementine uh, from SPSS. Uh, that was uh, uh, that was more about uh, data mining and such things. The term data science was not in uh, OGA during these those days. People used to refer to this as uh, predictive analytics, right? So one of the tools was uh, Clementine. In today's day and age, it is called as PASW modeler or uh, IBM uh, modeler. Uh, the second tool uh, which was used was uh, is, uh, SAS E minor. And the third uh, tool, which was uh, basically used uh, was uh, iMiner from IBM. 
I minor is no, is no longer existing. It has become uh, defunct as of today. Now the latest version of SPSS uh, that is in the market is uh, SPSS 26.0. Now that was, uh, this was uh, launched uh, in the year uh, 2020. So you can see here uh, from version 1.0 all the way up to version uh, 26.0, SPSS has gone uh, gone through several changes, additions and variations. There have been several new features, updates uh, that has uh, uh, that have been incorporated into SPSS. Right. So this is a uh, uh, this is about the history of SPSS. Now, one popular question which people ask is, uh, what does SPSS stand for? Uh, right, it's a, a valid question. Now, when SPSS was introduced uh, way back in 1968, uh, SPSS stood for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. I'll repeat, SPSS stood for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. Why social sciences? Because predominantly SPSS during those days uh, was uh, used by people from social science uh, vertica. Uh, now you realize that SPSS is no longer used only by people from social science uh, vertica, uh, people from banking sector, insurance sector, clinical research trials, pharma domain, hospital sector, people from uh, teaching profession, people from a wide variety of uh, domain, uh, uh, people from wide variety of uh, verticals use SPSS, right? So uh, it's, there's a good chance that you would have also heard of PASW, the acronym PASW, uh, around uh, 10 uh, uh, years back, uh, somewhere around 2009, when uh, IBM uh, bought SPSS, uh, uh, SPSS was briefly called as predictive analytic software. I repeat, it is called. It was called as predictive analytic software. That was uh, majorly uh, because of the trademark uh, dispute. Uh, as of today, uh, we don't refer to SPSS as predictive analytic software or statistical package for social sciences. As of today, SPSS is simply called as IBM SPSS statistics. I repeat, as of today, uh, SPSS is called as IBM SPSS Statistics. The, I, uh, the acronym uh, uh, SPSS does not stand for anything. We just refer to SPSS uh, as IBM SPSS Statistics. Going forward, now uh, these terminologies uh, that you uh, will always hear can be slightly confusing. People talk about versions, which are nothing but uh, the release updates. As I was uh, saying, uh, 1.0, that was the first version of SPSS, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. SPSS uh, versions uh, have kept on changing uh, during the last 40, 50 years. And the current uh, our, our version uh, of SPSS is the 26.0, uh, right? Now, uh, for most practical purposes, uh, regardless of which version that you're using, whether it is SPSS 13.0, 24.0, 26.0, uh, the ideas uh, and uh, the features that we uh, talk about hold good, except a few features which might not uh, uh, work uh, for the earlier versions of SPSS. Uh, this is as far as the versions are concerned. The second thing that you'll always hear is uh, additions, right? Uh, SPSS additions. Now, what do I mean by additions? Uh, now, when I speak about additions, uh, uh, it refers to what is included in a particular purchase. When you purchase, uh, uh, when you purchase SPSS, what all features uh, are included in SPSS? Uh, these features, these components are referred to as additions. And lastly, you will also hear uh, about modules. Uh, when we speak about modules, the different functionalities, the different features that come with SPSS are referred to as modules, right? So when we speak about versions, these are nothing but uh, the different release updates. Uh, when we speak about uh, additions, what is included in a particular uh, purchase of SPSS, and that varies uh, by price, right? It uh, varies uh, by price. Uh, it also varies uh, depending upon what uh, features you want. Thirdly, the modules, right? These are nothing but features of the components of SPSS, right? Now, for those of you who would have used uh, R, uh, roughly around there are 11,000 different packages. Right now, SPSS uh, has around 14 uh, different modules. Uh, the, this number keeps uh, changing, you know, uh, they sometimes, uh, uh, they sometimes uh, 
add a new module, they may remove a module or integrate it with another module. But broadly speaking, there may be the base uh, module and over and above the base module, you uh, have around uh, 40, 14 different uh, components or uh, modules, right? So uh, we're gonna, we gonna talk about each of these things uh, in greater detail in the subsequent slides. Let's first talk about uh, additions. Now there are uh, majorly four different editions uh, uh, of SPSS. One is what is called as uh, the base edition, right? The second one is what is called as the standard edition. The third one is called as uh, the professional edition of SPSS. And the top of the line uh, SPSS edition is called as uh, the premium edition, which is the fourth uh, edition of uh, SPSS. Now, as I said, uh, SPSS uh, edition uh, varies by price and the features uh, that you ask for. Now, in the base uh, edition, uh, what you get uh, is the basic statistics, right? You can run your simple graphs and such things, simple uh, frequencies, descriptors, central tendency, measures of dispersion, uh, those sort of things. Then you also have linear regression. You uh, get to do your clustering and uh, factor analysis. These are some of uh, the uh, these are some of the features that you can expect in base. Now, this is not exhaustive. These features which I'm calling out are just indicative. You can look at uh, the SPSS uh, website for a detailed list of the features that would come under uh, the base uh, edition. Let's make a move on to the standard edition. Now, uh, they add on additional features, right? Uh, now, with the standard edition, you also get to do logistic regression. Uh, with the base edition, you can't do logistic regression. With the standard edition, you get to do logistic regression, generalized linear model, survival analysis, and uh, the interactive uh, drag and drop uh, formation of the tables, which is popularly referred to as the custom tables. Now, custom table is very, very easy and uh, widely used in uh, market research organizations. Let's make a move to the third one, which is known as the professional edition. Now, as far as the professional edition is concerned, you can do the data preparation. Uh, you can clean your outliers. You can get rid of uh, duplicate cases, missing value imputation, and such things can be done. If you're into time series analysis, uh, your uh, ARIMA model and your exponential smoothing, those sort of forecasting models can be run using uh, the professional edition. And then uh, you can also do your decision tree. Right, decision tree is extensively used uh, in the banking sector as well as uh, in the insurance domain. So decision tree, various options of decision tree like uh, the CHAID method or the CART method or the C uh, 5.0 can be uh, run under uh, the professional edition. You can also do uh, quite a bit of uh, imputation techniques uh, with uh, the professional edition. Uh, fourthly, what you have is the premium edition. Uh, here you can do uh, a lot of bootstrapping, right? Uh, then you can do complex sampling uh, options. You get to do your exactness and structural equation uh, model, right? Uh, so these are uh, majorly uh, the four different additions. Uh, from time to time, uh, uh, SPSS uh, either adds another uh, addition or uh, mostly they add, they don't uh, uh, remove these any of the existing additions. They, uh, give an addition, uh, addition, uh, addition, but majorly for all practical purposes, these are the major additions and they change uh, with respect to the price. You can look at the SPSS uh, website uh, if you want uh, richer detail about the pricing and the features. We spoke about uh, modules. Uh, uh, when we speak about modules, uh, these are nothing but uh, the features uh, that you get to use. Uh, depending upon the additional features, uh, you always get to use uh, the base uh, version of SPSS, but over and above the base uh, version of SPSS, uh, you have uh, 13 different uh, modules like the regression module, advanced module, right, wherein you can do your two-way ANOVA, three-way ANOVA, a multivariate analysis of uh, uh, multivariate analysis, uh, and then you can do your repeated measures and such things. You can run your categories module, Categories is widely used in market research. Classification tree, complex samples, conjoint analysis, exactness, neural network, missing value analysis, tables, trends, and uh, data validation can also be done. Uh, last uh, but not the least, uh, they have also included what is called as uh, RFM analysis, recency, frequency, monetary analysis. 
Now, uh, this was uh, included in uh, SPSS 16.0 and has continued and stayed with the SPSS uh, uh, for the subsequent uh, version of uh, SPSS. So these are some of the uh, modules that you get to use. Now you can pick and choose uh, uh, each of these uh, modules. You don't need all of these modules. Uh, you can just select depending upon which module you want, you can just uh, uh, order only those modules and those modules which you feel uh, are not uh, relevant to your uh, institute, you can just uh, ignore uh, that particular module because uh, uh, based on the additional modules, uh, SPSS costing also will be on the higher side, right? Now, uh, let's uh, move on to uh, the last bit of it, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, SPSS. To the le left side, I've listed out a few uh, high-level uh, advantages. Now, SPSS has a very, very long history. As I told you, it has around 50, 60 years of history behind it. So you have a huge community support. So if you have any trouble, uh, you can obviously refer uh, a lot of the books that I've written uh, in uh, SPSS. Uh, there's a wonderful book uh, that has been written uh, uh, by uh, Darren George and Paul Malari. There's a good book written uh, by Rajendra Nargunkar, which is uh, known as SPSS for Market Research. You can still uh, order it uh, on uh, Amazon. So uh, you get a lot of books. You can interact with a lot of people. They have got a lot of technical support and such things. It is very, very user-friendly. I know that a lot of people love to code, right? Uh, but equally, you have a segment of people who might not uh, have a programming background. So they may not... Uh, uh, like to do a lot of uh, programming, coding, and such things. Not all of us want to spend uh, time looking at where a semicolon has been missed, uh, where a semicolon is missing, or where a comma or a full stop is missing, uh, or uh, whether the uh, whether the words are in caps or in small letters. Right? If any of these things are missing, you'll get a huge error. You get a long uh, uh, you get a long uh, list of errors in R or Python. Now, a lot of us uh, might just uh, want to uh, quickly push the data, get some analysis graphs and do some model. We want to spend some time on the model building analysis, not necessarily on coding. So SPSS is a tool which has uh, unleashed what I would call as uh, no code revolution, right? You don't have to write any code syntax and such things. So in that sense of the word, SPSS is very, very user friendly. You have uh, just a point and click uh, feature which makes it very, very uh, user friendly and simple to use. Thirdly, quick results, right? The amount of code that you have to write, let's say uh, in R or Python, let's say you want to do a simple graph, you may have to write five or six lines of code in uh, matplotlib uh, or uh, even for that matter, your ggplot and such things. The amount of time you spend uh, on coding and such things the same amount of time you can spend doing multiple models, you can explore, you can compare different models and you can quickly publish results, right? So SPSS uh, has become an absolute darling in the field of uh, research and uh, even the field of NGOs uh, and uh, in the field of academics. Fourth big advantage, uh, sorry, fifth big advantage that I see is forward compatibility. Right. When I say forward compatibility, we just spoke about the release uh, updates, right? 1.0, 2.0, SPSS release updates, right? Now there's a good chance that if you have uh, uh, run a code, if you have created a code in SPSS 16.0, you can take the same code and execute it in uh, SPSS 20.0, right? There are certain exceptions, but by and large, uh, the codes are forward compatible, right? So 95 to 96% of the times you will not have uh, too much of a hassle, too much of a difficulty with uh, running uh, codes. So uh, by and large, they're consistent. Uh, apart from this, uh, SPSS uh, also, there are a lot of free plugins uh, for R, Python, Java, and Microsoft uh, .NET, right? So these are some of the distinct advantages of SPSS, right? It's user friendliness. It saves a lot of time. You can also uh, run a lot of uh, big data analysis here. You can integrate it with uh, Spark if you want. There are uh, features to do that, right? There are ways to do it. So these are some of the advantages of uh, SPSS. Now, what are some of the disadvantages? It can be pricey, right? 
from an Indian perspective, it can run up to lakhs together. So uh, uh, you, uh, it can be pricey. Uh, you get a free trial, uh, which, you, which can be downloaded from uh, uh, their official website. But the problem with the free trial is that it works only for 14 days. So you might be wondering, uh, should I sell my house uh, to buy SPSs? Not really. You, uh, there are other ways of uh, you know, installing SPSs. You can motivate uh, your organization. You can build a business case in the organization that you're working uh, for to uh, procure SPSs and run your SPSs uh, queries um, uh, once, you pro once your organization procures uh, SPSs, right? That's a smarter way of doing it. Secondly, SPSs might not necessarily be a, a, a favorite tool in the corporate sector. People mainly use Python and R in the corporate sector. Uh, thirdly, you might uh, run into backward compatible uh, issues, which means that uh, let's take the example of uh, uh, you know, automated modeling, which you have developed in the 26th version or in the 24th version. If you want to take the code and uh, sort of run this in the 18th version of SPSS, uh, you might run into trouble, right? So backward uh, compatibility issues uh, do exist, right? So this is uh, uh, about SPSS. So this is uh, a very, very high level uh, presentation about SPSS.